And finally, Dave Mullet from Midnight Tailors. Come on back. And I want to welcome to the show Jerry and Jeff from Geeks Public House. Welcome to the show, guys. How's it going, there? Jerry, tell us all about Geeks Public House, or Jeff, whoever's talking. <laughs> you can take this one. So uh, we are a pub located downtown uh, that are kind of fit more for the Dish community of geeks locally. Uh, so whether it's board games, video games, uh, similar interests, we are looking for a space for uh, that population to hang out. So we come down, we have uh, free board games, free video games, all kinds of interesting drinks taken from various fandoms, uh, and we just get the community together and uh, have a good time with it. So I'm gonna ask the most obvious question. Sports bar? No. <laughs> No. no, no. I mean, it hits on the same sort of idea, right? Like, yes. you know, everybody, uh, all sports fans hanging out together and, uh, you know, enjoying their fandom. Uh, but instead, we, you know, we might stream esports as opposed to sports. Mm -hmm. uh, lately, we've been doing a lot of things with Rocket League, so uh, that's kind of our personal favorite esport. But yeah, it's uh, the same sort of idea, but different population target. Game geared towards people with geeky interests instead of like a sports bar where people are in the sports. League. Absolutely, you can uh, still go and uh, cheer for your favorite favorite team. Just hopefully your favorite team is uh, an esports team. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. You're, you're you're cheering for the, for stormtroopers or, or or the red shirts or something like that. There's a lot of those conversations. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I bet it is. Uh, who started it? That would be me. Me. All right, Jerry. Tell us why you started Geeks Public House. Uh, there just seemed to be a gap in the market with. Uh, like with geek in general. So essentially, it's not a hard idea to come up with. There's thousands of sports bars mm -hmm. and practically zero geek bars. So you just take the model of the original sports bar and yeah. just transition into more just pop culture related. So instead of having, you know, jerseys of your favorite team or favorite player on the wall, we have pictures from your favorite movie or autographed things or hand-built uh, art because the the geek and the art community kind of go hand in hand here, especially locally. Yep. So we see a lot more cosplays than jerseys. That's for sure. Yeah, there's a, yeah, there's a lot more <laughs> cosplay than, than Montreal Canadian jerseys coming through, right? Uh, so basically, with the local um, group of geeks that are here in St. John's, mm -hmm. the, the creativity is, is explosive compared to most anywhere else I've seen. Uh, you know, like per capita of geeks, we'll say. Yeah. So to to stock the place with creative, like artsy things and cosplay and photos, it was easy because we just reached out to our local friends and community and said, hey, we're doing this idea, we mm -hmm. want it to look, and then it almost instantly became a museum to our, our local cosplay community. And then the people that we've kind of targeted to come in there were the closet geeks. The, the people that, you know, they're sitting at home at night watching anime, but you know, yeah. they're going to their daytime job and they're, or they're working in like a, I'll say a normal sports bar. Right. And then they walk by and they walk in and they're like, oh, this is kind of cool. Is that from this obscure anime? <laughs> and yeah, we're like, yeah. yeah, we're like, geez, you know? It's uh, so now we've like basically identified people that have been geeks for a long while, but mm -hmm. just they don't know that that community's out there. So, uh, so now we've got that. And also, you know, there's the stereotype that most geeks, you know, would stay home mm -hmm. and play their games in their basement, right. you know? And, and that's not just true. It's just that there was nowhere for them to go where they could just easily walk in the door and say, hey, these are my people. It's almost like, for lack of a better word, a safe, comfortable place to go if you're into anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely hit that niche market too where yeah. uh, you don't need a group of friends to go down to the pub. Yeah. Uh, you walk in and there's already 10 people there with, I, we used to say in the beginning when we opened up, because we've been open like two years and a bit now. Yeah. Uh, you know, we don't all have the same interest, no. but we all share the same passion for the interest that we have. So, That's right. you know, Someone might be into Star Trek a yes, lot. A little bit. Right? Yeah. But then someone might be into Star Wars. It doesn't yeah. matter which one's better. It's they just like them the same amount. So you yeah. kind of respect someone of like, oh, yeah, you're in a list and you can get into yeah. this conversation where yeah. you don't need to know the specifics, but I understand you're passionate. That's you right. understand I'm passionate. And you're instantly friends. Yeah, cool. That's neat. Uh, what changes have you made over the last year? You, you mentioned that you're doing some changes. Yeah, so we started out as a pub in the beginning, like mm -hmm. just strictly in the nighttime and adults only. Uh, yeah. But with COVID, we kind of had to improvise and get versatile. Right. So in the past year, we have added food service to our bar. We've changed it in from, we've 
segmented it from a cafe in the daytime mm -hmm. and a pub in the nighttime. The reason for that being is to allow minors to uh, enjoy it too, so they can come oh. in with their family, okay. get a meal, enjoy the board games, you know, see all, again, that fantastic art that I've been talking about, whereas before, you know, families would walk in through the door and yeah. we'd have to stop them and go, okay, minors aren't allowed in here, and they say, yeah. well, but there's Play-Doh in the window. And I'm exactly. like, yeah, and they're kind of like, well, why do you have Play-Doh if there's no minors? And I'm That's like, right. this is gonna be an awkward conversation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So what's the age, what's considered the age of minors and adults? So it's, and is it 18 or 19? 19 plus, N 19 as plus. for the adults. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's 19 plus at 7, 7 p.m. Yeah. And at how many nights a week are you guys open? Seven nights a week. Oh, seven you're all, oh, seven yep. days yep. a week. Seven Excellent. days a week. Good. So. Uh, got any type of events coming up, or what type of events do you have at the... Well, uh, oh. we have uh, had a history of doing various themed events, we'll say. We've uh, done everything from our Harry Potter Yule Ball, oh, uh, nice. which, uh, you know, COVID kind of threw off being a regular thing, but yep. hopefully we'll be revisiting in the future. Uh, so that was our Christmas uh, mm -hmm. ball. For, for lack of a better word. We do trivia nights um, on the regular. Some of the bigger ones uh, you know, will be a Disney prom. Uh, again, oh, that's, that's nice. Yeah, that's, uh, again, that was one that was in the works, but the yeah. pandemic uh, delayed, so we're looking at that now again, too. So we do some bigger events, some smaller events like the trivia, or Rocket League nights, or uh, movie showings, that kind of thing. That is excellent. And just touch on the food for a second. Is the food served all during the day or just in the evenings? Yeah, the food will be served all day. Um, essentially, in the daytime, it's more cafe style. So, you know, it's simple sandwiches, yeah. uh, like fries, uh, soup, chili, stuff like that. And in the nighttime, it's more pub food, you know, right. of, of that regard. Yeah. So we just keep it simple and, you know, it's... Uh, so for someone trying to find you, what's the, what's the full address and how do they find you online? So, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> take it, take it. Uh, so it's 288 Duckworth, uh, so on the corner between Duckworth and uh, Cathedral Street. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for us online, we do have a Facebook page. Uh, we, what's our web address? Uh, www.geekspublichouse.com. No for spaces or yep, anything that's, that's, that's our website. Uh, we also have a Discord where uh, on our Facebook or our mm -hmm. uh, website, web page, you'll find a link for our Discord. Yeah. Excellent. All right. All right, uh, Jerry, Jeff, thanks for coming in to got, to, and telling us all about Geeks Public House. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> meet up with some of the boys, go down to Geek's Public House, have a drink or two some evening, I think it'd be a grand time. I want to thank Jeff and Jerry from Geek's Public House for a great interview. Up next, we have Dave Mullet from Midnight Tailors. I would like to welcome to the show Dave Mullet, owner and operator of Midnight Tailors. Welcome to the show, sir. Hi, Darren. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure to be here. Dave, tell us all about Midnight Tailors. Midnight Tailors is a business that my partner and I started, uh, born from a mutual respect and talent for tailoring. Uh, we both worked in alternative careers, film and music. Um, then when we got together, uh, we realized that we had to come up with something a little more substantial. Mm -hmm. So we took our combined skills of sewing and our creativity and started making suits and jackets and costumes and all kinds of things like that. Uh, we found there was a lot of competition in that world already. Yep. Difficult to make the buck off of it with the internet and all that stuff, totally understandable. So we went down to uh, smaller ticket items like bow ties, neckties, things like that. Sticking with um, artists, local work, things like that. And, you know, obviously branching into the sci-fi and geeky markets using those items. So that's it. We, we both had alternative careers. We decided to come into a little more start our own business, a little more reliable mm -hmm. uh, source of income, I suppose, and yep, yep. Uh, it just kind of developed from there, and here we are making accessories for weddings, grads, proms, all kinds of fun stuff. So what items do you make? You mentioned bow ties, like a tie like you have We do neckties, shorts. neckties yep. and bow ties. We do, uh, we do do smaller ticket uh, clothing items as well, like vests and things like that. Okay, yep. uh, we make hats and uh, all kinds of lovely stuff like that, but then we also branched into like uh, rockabilly style headscarves and scrunchies, mm -hmm. um, and ultimately those are our main items. Items, but we do do 
all kinds of custom work. All so kinds of custom outside work. of we don't really advertise the costumes and the suits like that, but if someone wants something and mm -hmm. and have a cool enough idea that we want to put the time into kind of thing, we will definitely dive into that as well. So, uh, so with the with the COVID now, how did you did did that affect your business anyways? Absolutely. Uh, when COVID hit, obviously we do a lot of cons and things like that. Yes. So those have all been canceled for the past almost two years at this point, right, which yep. is a, str a struggle for everybody. Yep. Uh, but you know, we obviously steered into the fabric mask thing right at the beginning. Um, um, back in April, when it was kind of first really being mm -hmm. pushed that this, this pa pandemic was happening, we were right. like, okay, well, we should start making these masks. And we actually got a lot of flack online, people calling us crooks and saying that these masks don't work and you can't wear non-medical masks and you're wasting mm -hmm. your money. And here we are in today's world of everybody wearing fabric masks yeah, everybody and non-medical. But it was only a small amount of that for a small amount of time. And honestly, once it kind of started rolling, we have not stopped with the masks. To date, we've made about 12,000. So when you did come up with a design for like a bow tie, or the tie that you're wearing there now. Uh, do you make like a run of them or do you just like do a little test market and put them on like a web page or something? Well, what or? we do is uh, we actually have a bunch of artists that we work with. Okay. Um, this one's actually uh, Tara Fleming. She's a local artist. She works in the film industry. She mm -hmm. does graphic design and things like that. For yeah. uh, I think she works on Hudson and Rex right now okay. and some smaller films. Um, and we had some from uh, Taste of Tea, Tyler Burry, just a yeah. bunch of local artists from you know Atlantic Canada primarily mm -hmm. that send us their designs. We arrange it onto a fabric, have the yeah. fabric printed, and so all of our designs are, are Midnight Tailors exclusives, yep. and then ultimately they're made to order. Um, we do have retailers, so we'll make runs for the retailers to sell right. and stuff like that. But outside of that, hit us up on our website four or five days later. You'll so have where can people find you? Are you just on websites? Are you are in, in any local stores or stores across the province anywhere? I'm glad you asked that. We are. Uh, you can find us on www.midnighttailors.com, which yep. is a great place you know, to, to buy all of our products. And you can hit us up pretty freely there for any custom work you might need. Uh, you can also find our products at Posey Row on Duckworth Street here in St. Okay, John's. Yep. Uh, yep. They really go through our stuff quickly. Uh, they have all the runs of masks, and they have a run of all of our fabrics and all of our products. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have been absolutely great to us. They've been one of the best retailers. We've also had a couple of places in Nova Scotia, a place called the Train Yard General Store in Dartmouth. They carry okay. our products. Yep. And uh, yeah, it's just day by day, we're adding more and more retailers. Um, again, a lot of them did drop off mm -hmm. due to the whole COVID thing. Sure. A, lot of, a lot of smaller businesses had closed, sadly, yeah. or at least shut down temporarily. But yeah, mm -hmm. website, those couple of retailers is a way to go. And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're at with that. That is excellent. Yeah. So if somebody, like a, a business out there, got an idea for bow ties, how would they? They can hit, they can hit us up on the old website, and we do corporate stuff all the time. We all did time. Uh, runs of bow ties for TD Bank for like uh, some of their corporate functions. Yep. Uh, we've done all kinds of great stuff. As I said, a lot of the names are escaping me now. It's been such yep. a blur of a year, but yep. uh, yeah, we've done like a bunch of like for the Mount Pearl Blades hockey organizations mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Because those young fellers and and then women and everybody, yep. they go to the events. Uh, pre and post games and they always have to yep. look good so that's now right. they're all wearing their matching ties and bow yep. ties and they yep. come in and they're looking like Team Iceland from the Mighty Ducks you know oh that's mean? nice <laughs> <laughs> striking fair into their enemies hearts <laughs> that's true is there a minimum order uh, nope not at all no minimum no. order uh, the higher the orders go obviously we'll get bulk of rates course, and things yep. like that yep. but nope no nope. you can order one you can order a hundred it's, it's, it's fine that's excellent so again where can people find you what, what's your web address www.midnighttailors.com and uh, the second best place would be Posey Row on Duckworth Street here um, in St. John's. Here in St. John's. All right, so if you want to get a bow tie specially made or a special order from Dave, just hit him up online. Thanks again, Dave, for coming in. Thanks for having me, Darren. And we'll be right back. If you have comments or guest ideas for Pocket Universe, please email darren.pocketuniverse at gmail.com. Oh, cool, look at that guy up there. And a volcano, awesome. I want to say a big thank you today for that awesome interview, and up next we have Jennifer with Dream Parties in Elf. And I'd like to welcome to the show Jennifer King from Dream Parties in Elf. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you, thank you for having me. Jennifer, tell us about your business, Dream Parties in L. Well, we offer theme park quality entertainment to children's birthday parties, special events, festivals, uh, grand openings, superhero training, princess training, all of, the, all of that. All of that. All of that. What, uh, what characters do you have? Oh my, princesses, superheroes, all of them? Yep. 
Okay. So, so I know you. I know you probably can't get all of them, but just mention some of them. Anna and Elsa, of course, are the big one. Yes, that's and, and, we, and they're from Frozen. And they're from Frozen. And yep. actually, I should start by saying I'm going to use the names that everybody would be familiar with. Sure. But. I am in no way affiliated with Disney, mm -hmm. and um, we don't typically use those names. We have our own character names. Sure, yeah. Okay? But the names that you'd be familiar with, we have Anna and Elsa, mm -hmm. and we have the classic Disney princesses, uh, Cinderella, Belle, Rapunzel, mm -hmm. um, Ariel, Sophia the First. Um, my goodness, there's so many. Why am I not thinking of them all? And um, for the superheroes, we also have uh, Spider-Man, Supergirl, Captain America, Batman. Sometimes we can offer Joker. He's a little bit more limited availability. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Black Widow. Uh, and there's there's so many more. So do yeah. you actually get dressed up yourself, or do you have people? Yeah. No. No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Actually, I have done a couple of parties as Black Widow. Yeah. Um, so typically, if I'm going to do any party, it mm -hmm. would be Black Widow. Okay. And um, I'm a little bit past the age where you, you can tell now that I'm not a young princess anymore. I'm more of a queen. Oh, I wouldn't so, say that. So yeah, so I, I tend not to do the birthday parties. But um, I have done Black Widow, Lara mm -hmm. Croft. Okay. Um, but also, I don't sing. Mm -hmm. So all of our princesses are trained singers. Oh, nice. Yes. That's and, a nice touch. Oh, absolutely. Yep. That's our must. You have to be able to sing. Mm -hmm. And so they're all trained singers, actors, dancers, and I can't sing. So right away, I'm not qualified. Okay. I'm not qualified. Actually, our superheroes are typically also trained singers, but they don't get the opportunity to sing, sadly. So when yep. someone contacts you for a birthday party mm -hmm. and the person character shows up. Just walk us through what they would do at a typical birthday party, right from the time they arrive. Like, do they usually arrive in costume? Or oh, do they get changed when they're there? Nope, so actually the princesses, a uh, little bit more so than the superheroes, the princesses take about an hour to get ready. Okay. So it's quite involved because I'm not just putting um, girls in costumes. Mm -hmm. they're, really, they're really authentic. We want the kids to feel like they've met, they've met Elsa, like this is the end all be all, they yep. met Elsa. And nice. they're gonna carry that with them forever. So the girls take a lot of time to get ready and mm -hmm. once they show up at the house, um, they walk in and uh, it's gonna go two ways. Either the kids freak out, they're so excited, they scream, they yes. run over, give them hugs. Yep. Of course, if COVID is not on the go. Mm -hmm. um, or they'll get really introverted and almost overwhelmed because their hero is here in front of them and That's right. they don't know what to do so they kind of shy, get a little bit shy, yeah. but uh, the princess will come in and she'll try to get everybody to relax and mm -hmm. get comfortable and the easiest way to do that of course is to sing. That's nice. So she'll sing a song and uh, teach a dance to the girls. Okay. Uh, just something simple obviously, yeah. you know, their kids could range from age two to age nine typically. Mm -hmm. So something simple and then they'll perform the dance together. And um, depending on what's going on with pandemic restrictions, yeah. um, they'll do makeup and nails. So oh, on the kids. Yes. That's nice. Yeah, they'll paint, they'll paint the kids' nails. Yeah. And makeup is just uh, some glitter eyeshadow, nothing fancy, but just mm -hmm. something to make the children feel special. Sure. And also that gives them an opportunity to just have one-on-one -on -one time with each child that's there. Oh, nice. Yeah, and so then basically they're all got their makeup done, they've got their nails done, they learned a song and a dance. Yeah. So then they perform it, have a little princess parade, mm -hmm. take some pictures. And uh, that's typically how it goes. Of course, sometimes okay. there's special requests. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. And how about if they have a superhero show up, like Captain America or Slider Man? What usually? Yes. What you? And I'm not saying boys or girls because I'm not saying a boy or girl party because girls love superheroes and they do. boys love boys love princesses. So they do. Everybody loves everybody. <laughs> that's the way. So I. Yeah. That's why I didn't say a girls boy a party or a boys party. So if we have a superhero show up. What would a superhero do? Um, thank you for pointing that out, actually, because if if I might say so myself, boys really love Elsa. Yeah. More than okay. more than the other Disney characters, boys really love Elsa, and that's mm -hmm. fine. And and uh, when we do the nails at the princess parties, the boys yep. get that done too. It's Good for it's them. not a gender thing. It's just having fun and experiencing the character. So I appreciate that you pointed that out. Um, so the superhero parties. Yeah. Uh, that is a pile of energy, is what that is. We. Um, we typically find that the kids want to, 
I'm not going to say beat up on. <laughs> but they want to interact yeah. a lot more one-on-one, -on -one, close, intimate with the superheroes. They right. want to really get in there. So yeah. there's a lot of high energy at the superhero parties. Mm -hmm. But um, that just kind of happens and obviously under control. Sure. But um, typically with the superhero parties, they're going to go through some superhero training. So mm -hmm. they, the intention is to get the kids up moving. They do a little warm up, a yeah. little workout, so to speak. Nice. And they talk about what it means to be a superhero, the attitude as well as the physical side of things. Oh, nice. Yep. And so a little, um, little uh, lesson in like morality, if we could call it like absolutely. that. Absolutely. Oh, nice. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Become, you know, I mean, with great power comes great responsibility. That's so right. They have to use that properly. They can't, yep. you know, they have to talk about manners and being respectful and that. That's right. So they go through superhero training. And then yep. after the training, there's that playtime that I just referred to sure. a few moments ago. Yep. And then once that's all done, and of course, we have to have pictures yep. and with the poses that they learned during their training. Mm -hmm. And then they all get a certificate, which shows that they are now a honorary superhero. So we call the superhero training um, recruiting, That's superhero nice. recruiting. That's yes. nice, superhero yeah. recruiting. Yeah. Now, you mentioned superheroes and you mentioned princesses. Uh, any villains? I am the villain. <laughs> Cause, uh, because a lot of times it's like a lot of people like when they watch a movie it's like they're sort of like rooting for the bad guy sometimes they are so do we ever have any requests for like <laughs> like as you mentioned the joker it was a joker you mentioned yes yeah. yes so do we have any uh like villains or bad guys or people like loki that are like sort of on the edge like are the good the bad they so do you have do we have anybody like that typically i don't I don't have that at the parties, no. no. Okay. Uh, but at special events, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, for example, we have a Joker and a Batman show that we do. So it's jo Joker versus Batman, and the yes. kids, and it's just a skit. The kids can sit there and watch. Oh, okay. But we don't typically do something like that at mm -hmm. somebody's house. That would be at a special event, um, which we've which we've done before, and those go off really great. Um, typically at the birthday parties, it's really just about. Uh, having the character there for the child to meet mm -hmm. and um, depending on what's again what's going on with the pandemic sure. usually there's a little craft that we'll make as well yeah for both the superhero or the princesses mm -hmm. all the kids boy girl no matter what they love to have a little craft that they can make with the superhero that's nice so we usually do that as well but typically no we don't have the villains don't have at the, the villains. birthday party the villains. it hasn't been requested no. but i bet you i'll get that request now <laughs> you will yeah <laughs> So with the, with the uh, different ages, what's like the youngest parties, uh, the youngest age parties you would do? And is there like a limit on the oldest ones you do? No limit. No limit No, no limit to your imagination. And I mean, it doesn't matter if the kid believes or doesn't believe. They, yeah. If they enjoy it and they want to have a character there, mm -hmm. it makes no difference. We've done, as a party, the oldest that we've done was in the 20s. Oh, neat. Yes. We've done one party at a hospital for um, an adult in his 20s who just needed something to make him smile. Something to cheer yes. him up. That's nice. And we've done a couple of office parties yep. for, um, it was, well, it was for the whole office, so I can't sure. say what the age limit was no, on no. that. Yep. But, um, yeah, it's actually really common for adults, just like yourself and just oh, like yeah. me, who yep. are really into the princesses or superheroes. Mm -hmm. And so it's not uncommon for a friend to say, you know, my my friend loves Belle. She's obsessed with Belle. I'd love yep. to have a Belle visit at the office. And sure. so we've gone in um, as Belle and wished her congratulations or on her new home or her yeah. new job or I mean there's no limit really on, on no. what can be done but for the typical birthday parties usually it's age two to seven is yeah. age four is the most popular but we've gone all the way down to six months as well oh that's nice that's nice yes now yeah. I'm gonna have to ask the COVID question yes when COVID happened how did that affect your business oh, so hard yeah. <laughs> so hard yeah we had to um, reinvent mm -hmm. and continuously reinvent. It's been tricky and it's just me.
Mm -hmm. So, and, and this is a side gig for me, it's a side business, so sure. I'm, you know, so it's been really hard to try to work it all in and figure it all out, but mm -hmm. um, my performers are fantastic and they've helped out a lot and so we did a lot of virtual parties. Well, we, that's nice. Yeah, we did some Zoom yeah. parties and um, we did that for, we did special events as well. Right across Canada there was um, Pathfinders had mm -hmm. an event, a national event, and so we did some Zoom parties for them. Yeah. The town of Holyrood. Lab City, some nice. communities here in Newfoundland. Nice. That is great. So we've got sidewalk visits, birthday parties, special events. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants to get a superhero or a princess, they just contact you. How can you contact Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Um, so email yep. Jennifer at dreampartiesnl.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Or our website, dreampartiesnl.com. Or Facebook. Dream Parties NL. <laughs> Dream Parties NL, excellent. We're on Instagram and yeah. on Twitter as well too. So Dream Parties NL is all they have to remember. All they that can find they have us. to remember. Yeah. And of course they can call. Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Well Jennifer, thanks for coming in today and tell us about your business. Thank you so much for having me. Let me see. Eh, uh, well, I try. I'd like to be an astronaut one day when I grow up, but I'm never gonna grow up. I want to say a big thank you to our guests today. Jerry, Jennifer, Jeff, and Dave. I want to say a very big thank you to the Geo Center for having us here. And a big thank you to you guys for tuning in. I hope you come back next time. Is that something that's still going on now? The Nickel yeah. Horror Challenge? Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, there was something that was started. I was actually on the board of the Nickel back when that one got started in, I think, maybe 2013 or 2012, something around mm -hmm. there. And um, it was just a 48 hour challenge. So people get something to uh, get kind of specific uh, prompts of like a line of dialogue or a prop or, or a character or something, something like that. And they have 48 hours to write, shoot, and edit uh, a short horror film.